This is some amazing stuff right here that I'm going to go over in this video and is how to connect Google Sidekit, the brand new official Google plugin for WordPress, how to add that to your website. But first, why would you even want to add it to your website? Well, whenever you start a website, there are services that Google provides for you, right? The two biggest ones are Google Analytics and Search Engine Console. And so what this plugin does is it helps you set those up and connect your site to them. So you're not going to need any of those Google Analytics plugins like Monster Insights or Analytify or anything like that. And it also ties in Google Search Engine Console, and that's where you get keyword insights on the traffic that are coming to your website. So what this does is it's an easy process for connecting your website to those services and it also pulls the data in from those services right on your WordPress based website so that you can see it in a very simple, easy to comprehend and understand manner. I got to tell you that I'm excited about this plugin. I added it to my website and in this video, I'm going to show you how to add it to your website. I mean, you set it up on one of my demo sites, but this provides excellent structure for any website owner that might forget to add search engine console or add this other thing, but it also adds two other services, AdSense and page speed insights to your website. So you can see the performance. This is really good. This is really free and I like that aspect as well. So for all my tutorials on how to create a website, this part of this video is going to be included in every single one because it provides the structure and the step-by-step -step process for anyone to add these services to your website. Uh, before we get into it, hi, my name's Adam from WPCrafter.com where I make WordPress tutorial videos for non-techies. If you're new here, consider clicking on the subscribe button, click on the notification bell if you want YouTube to let you know when I have new videos. Okay, here we are. You can see what it looks like right here when it's uh, installed and activated. Uh, you're going to get really nice looking dashboards with great insight and it's going to merge all this data together. So uh, you're going to want to go to sitekit.withgoogle.com. That is the URL or just Google. Go to Google and search for Google Site Kit and it'll take you right here. Then you'll click on Get Developer Beta. Now this is in beta. It was announced late last year, 2018, and it's a beta, but it works great. So hopefully there's only improvements to come. So you'll come here and here's a little bit of information. This will probably change in the future to be more obvious, but then there's a link right here. It says download right here. So then what you're gonna wanna do is go to your WordPress website, go to plugins, add new, and wherever you download, uh, actually we'll click on upload plugin, and then where you downloaded it, you just drag and drop that sucker in there, click on install now, and you'll click on activate and we are set so we get this congratulations you'll click on start setup and this is what i like about it the most it's all kind of point and click easy now there's going to be some technical jargon get your api copy this copy that but it walks you through the entire process it's so easy to do and we're going to do it together so you want to make sure the web browser that you're using you have a google account already so for me, it's just the Gmail account that you have some Google account and you're logged into it. It's going to make this a little bit smoother. So for the various steps right here that it's going to walk us through, there's going to be a link. You just click on it and do what it says. So this first one is we need to get this little snippet of code. So we'll click right here and we're just going to go through this step by step. Now it opened this in a new web browser. I'm going to go ahead and click on get OAuth credentials. Now there was a warning here. If you have a pop-up blocker, just disable it. It's going to interfere with getting these credentials and all these steps. So just temporarily, it's funny how they do that uh, with the pop-up blocker, but for temporarily, just go ahead and disable it. So you don't have to highlight or anything. There's a little copy button right here and I'll click on done. And then I'm going to go back. I'm going to paste this in like that. Click on proceed. Step one done. Pretty easy, right? And it's just going to be like that. So now we need to sign in with Google. So I'll click on sign in with Google. And you can choose your account, your Google account that you're logged into. And this is the one that I have right here. And there's a couple prompts. We're going to have to click allow. And then a second time, we're going to click allow. This might change. There might be a one extra click in the future, but that's what it is right now. And then I'm going to go here and I'm going to click on allow. It should take me back to my website. Bam. I'm already on step three. Now it's going to verify your URL really quick. This will just take a moment. And here we are. And it's showing me the website address. That is my website address. I'll click on continue. 
See how nice it's providing the structure step by step versus you having to go to this website and dig through the menu system and the settings to find this little key thing and reading instruction. This is just click a button, click a button, click a button. It couldn't be any easier than this. Okay, congrats. Well, I'm actually done. So this is the first step. So now I'm going to click on go to dashboard. And now I've connected to search engine console and there's these three other services here that we could optionally connect to as well. Now, this is a site I just use for demo purposes. It's not going to pull in any meaningful data here. So it's why it's saying this gathering data. I haven't had these services connected to it prior. So there isn't going to actually be any data anyway. So the next one would be Google Analytics. Let's see what this is like. And I haven't created a Google Analytics account for this domain yet. So let's go ahead and see what the process is like. Now, this is the only funny step in the process. I remember when I added it to my website, it's going to say this warning screen, uh, but this will probably go away in the future. So if you're installing this over the next couple of months, you might run into it. So we'll just go through it together. So I'll click on proceed. You'll want to just maybe read those steps. I'll click right here and here's that warning. It says click on advanced and then click right here where it says uh, go to where we want to go. Now, um, your web browser might be different. I'm using Google Chrome. Okay, I'm going to have to click allow four times. One, two, three, four. There it is. I'll click on allow and there it is. Now we're connecting into uh, Google Analytics. Uh, I do have a Google Analytics account, but I don't have one for this website. You have an account and then you create uh, sort of like a sub account for the various web properties that you have. So I'll click on create an account and then it just takes me into the uh, Google Analytics area here where I just need to fill out some stuff. So I'll go ahead and fill that out right now. Okay, here's what I've entered in the account name, the website name. This isn't the URL because there's a separate URL spot right here. So I've got those values in. You choose a category and your reporting time. And here's some uh, boxes that will be checked by default. I unchecked these. I'm not really interested in sharing my data with Google, even though they already have it anyway. All right, that's it. It's all filled out. I'll click on get tracking ID and I need to accept some of these options. So I'm gonna click on this checkbox. I'm gonna click on this checkbox. I'm gonna click on agree. We have the little success message. And now it's taking me to the tracking code right here. Now I'm assuming I don't need to copy and paste this across. I'm assuming I could go here and click on refetch my account because I just created one. So let's see what happens. Refetch my account. Okay, now there was a bit of a cut in me recording this video. What you didn't see is clicking on the reconnect to uh, find the property was not working. So what I ended up having to do was if you look on the top right, here is kind of your login and then there's the drop down there. So what I had to do was literally click on disconnect. Um, and then I started the process over again. It wasn't every single step. I just clicked on connect back to the account and I had to, it was that step where you got the error and you had to get past it and then click yes a few times and then it automatically pulled it up. So if you are connecting this to a, and creating a brand new analytics account, you might run into that error. It's a good thing it happened in this video so that you know how to deal with it. Just log out and then log back in. So now it's actually showing that analytics account that was just created. So I'm going to click on configure analytics right here and you can see now that's connected as well. Lastly, let's click on page speed insights. This is going to let you know the performance of your website. So I'll go ahead and click on connect services. Click right here to get an API key. Click on get API key. It should show that to me and I'll just do that quick copy and paste. There's my copy and let's go back here, paste that in, click on proceed. And now I have that connected as well. So if I go down here to settings, it's going to show me all the services that I have connected in very convenient. And then I can click right here. Where it says connect to more services. Now this is where it gets interesting. I don't have a need for AdSense because I don't run AdSense on my website, but check this out. It is going to have integration with Google optimize. And this is how you can run a B split tests on the page content on your website. That's very interesting. So we also have Google Tag Manager that can easily be set up by clicking on set up tag manager. This is really deep in connecting to all of these Google services. It's pretty amazing. And then we have here just some admin settings. Uh, there's probably no need to go in here except 
tracking. This would not be Google. They weren't tracking everything that you were doing. So right here, even though they didn't let you know in advance they were going to do this, you might want to uncheck that so that they are not tracking everything you do, even though they're going to track everything you do, even though they tell you they're not tracking you, they are tracking you. So then you're going to be able to see all your data right here. It is pretty fantastic and it's pulling everything in and you can change date ranges. So some of these on the right here, you can actually change. So right here for popularity, I click on the arrow and I can change my date ranges. Uh, these ones aren't really showing me anything, but that's okay. Okay, then we got it there. We got it here. We don't have it there on search funnel. So you have that. Now there's another really neat thing that it does. And when you're on the front end of your website, I'll go to the front end right here and you are logged in and you have this admin bar. There should be an icon that says site kit. I'm wondering if it's not showing on this site because I just connected it and there's actually no data. But on the other t sites that I've tested this on, there is an option here that says site kit. You hover over it and a little drop down comes down and it shows you the traffic stats to that page that you're on. I find that it's very convenient to find out which pages on your website are getting traction and which ones are not getting traction the one to identify the ones that you can improve upon so i'm pretty excited about google site kit i think that it's very interesting what they're doing here i think that this is going to become the gold standard way of connecting your website to google services so you will no longer need those Google Analytics plugins and all that kind of stuff. You can just do it all through SiteKit. And I hope once this is out of beta to that they put this in the WordPress repository so you don't have to go to Google site to download it. Just plugins, add new and all that. So, hey, I want to hear what you think about Google SiteKit in the comment section down below. Do you think it's something that you would install on your website and maybe it can replace multiple plugins that you're currently using on your website? And also, what Google services do you think that they could integrate to make uh, having a website that much easier, intelligent, and you can be a lot more strategic about everything you do. Ask me in the comments or leave comments in the comment section down below. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me out. And thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe, click on the notification bell. I'll see you in the next video.